This is the Zonai energy cell. It allows you to do stuff like this, and this, and most importantly, this. Indeed, building useful and interesting vehicles is a huge part of the gameplay of Tears of the Kingdom. But the game itself is pretty reluctant to give us much insight as to how the vehicles you build affect the usage of your energy cell. This video will answer that question for you. I took it upon myself to do all of the research to determine exactly how quickly each Zonai part drains your energy cell and what happens when you combine them together in one vehicle. By the end of this video, not only will you be able to predict within a fraction of a second exactly how long your vehicle will last once you turn it on, but you will also be able to use this knowledge to build more efficient vehicles for yourself. For all of my research presented in this video, I conducted it the only way I knew how to. Since I don't have any access to the game's code, I instead just built a given vehicle, smacked it, and in my video editor I timed how long it took for my energy cell to drain. Crude as that process may be, I did start to see a pattern at a certain point, and I've now used that to build a calculator for myself that can predict exactly how long a vehicle will last. I hope you will find the following as interesting as I do. Without further ado, let's get started with the video. First things first, if you're measuring something, then you're going to need some kind of unit. Just as this game uses meters to measure distance or degrees to measure temperature, I'm going to use wells to measure energy. This is one well. It is exactly equal to one green block in your energy gauge. You start the game with three wells, but you can eventually upgrade to 48. After you have reached 24 wells or eight sets of green blocks, any subsequent upgrades will convert one green block into a blue one, which is worth two wells. The devs probably made it work this way to reduce the UI clutter as you upgrade your energy cell. Upgrading your energy cell is pretty simple. You scour the depths for crystallized charges and you can exchange them at a refinery to create a new energy well. The specifics of doing this aren't really the focus of this video, and if you want to do that there are plenty of guides out there already. What matters is that at any given point in the game, your maximum capacity is always divisible by one well, and so that's why we're going to use that as our unit. Okay, so we've now pinned down a good unit to measure energy, but how about the energy's rate of change? After all, we only use the energy cell to power stuff, and during that time it is constantly changing. We generally only care about the energy cell's rate of change when it is depleting, because that means that we're running some kind of machine. And so, I'm going to go ahead and use the term depletion to describe our negative rate of change when we have a machine turned on. And to measure depletion, we're going to use the unit of wells per second. And just as it sounds, if you're burning at one well per second, then that means that each second of in-game time that passes, one well is going to dissipate from your energy gauge and be used to power the machine. To give a little bit more context, one well per second is actually quite an aggressive use of your energy cell. For instance, if we want to burn at that rate, we need to actually connect together and power no less than 10 beam emitters. Right now, as you can see, my energy cell's capacity is 15 wells, and so burning at one well per second, we should expect it to take 15 seconds to fully deplete. So yeah, there's a sense of context for you. Most of the time we're going to be dealing with fractional amounts of wells per second because most vehicles don't really burn this hard. The next thing that I wanted to address was the regeneration rate of your energy cell, and this is actually really easy to figure out. Basically, the moment that your energy cell fully depletes, it becomes blacked out and you're unable to use it for exactly 21 seconds while it fully recharges. That first second, nothing happens, and then for the following 20, it recharges at a constant rate. The only way that I know of to reduce this recharge time is to equip a full set of level 2 Zonite armor. Doing this will moderately reduce your recharge time from 20 seconds down to 14 and a third seconds. That initial second of downtime hasn't changed, but after that your battery recharges 50% faster, and that's where you get the 14 and a thirds from. And while I'm on that topic, I'll go ahead and explain the other effects of the Zonite armor. If you equip one piece of Zonite armor, then your energy cell depletion is reduced to 80% of its normal value. If you further equip a second piece, then it's reduced to 65%, and if you have the full set on, then it'll reduce it all the way down to 50%. 
So, with a couple of exceptions that I'll get into later, basically any machine that you can build will run twice as long before running out of energy if you're wearing a full set of Zonite armor. At this point, I think I've finally gotten out of the way all of the basic information before we get into the heart of this video. One by one, I'm going to go through all of the powered Zonite components in the same order that they show up in the capsule inventory. I will put timestamps and chapters for each one, but I heavily encourage you to at least watch the segments about fans and emitters because I'm going to tell you some really important stuff that affects every component during those segments. Although I wasn't able to test everything in this game, basically anything that you see on the screen right now doesn't affect your energy cell usage in any way from what I found. You can have it connected to a vehicle or disconnected and just lying around, but it doesn't really make a difference. This video is about parts that do affect your energy cell, so I'm not going to mention anything on the screen right now for the rest of the video. At this point, I think I've given you guys everything that you need to know before beginning the main part of this video, so without further ado, let's go ahead and begin our deep dive into all of the powered Zonite components. The first device that we will look at today is the Humble Fan. If you're anything like me, then the fan is probably one of your most frequently used components, and so you probably have a bit of intuition as to how quickly it burns your energy cell. Today, I will improve your intuition by giving you some numbers to go with it. The first thing that we test is the single fan just sitting on the ground, powered on, and we don't have Link wearing any Zonite armor. This test condition is a great way to get a sense of the sort of base performance of a device, and so I'm going to go ahead and call the results of this test the device's base depletion rate. As I said before, we're going to just take the total amount of time that it took this device to burn through all of our energy wells, and we're going to divide our number of wells by the time it took to get a measure of wells per second that the fan consumes. In this video, I have 24 wells, and the fan took 153.85 seconds to deplete them all, so if we go ahead and do the math, we're going to get the result that the fan burns just about 0.156 wells per second. I want you to try to remember this value if you can. 0.156, it's just one number, but I think it means a lot because we're all pretty familiar with how the fan feels at this point, and so as I go through the rest of the devices, you can get a sense based on their numbers of how efficient they are when compared to a fan. If you have multiple fans running separately from each other, then it's pretty easy to figure out their total depletion, because all you need to do is just multiply this value by the number of fans that you have. But does it work the same way if they're connected together? Well, the answer to that is actually no and I was surprised to find this out, but the game gives you a little bit of bonus efficiency when you have multiple components connected together. In the case of fans, each additional fan that you connect to your vehicle after the first one will only add on an additional 50% of the fan's base depletion rate. To show you what I mean, take a look at this table on the right half of the screen. The leftmost column represents the number of fans that you have attached to your machine. The middle column represents the total amount of depletion of all of those fans put together. And the rightmost column represents a sort of multiplier that you could apply to the fan's base depletion to get the values in the middle column. So, as you can see, if you sort of trace your way down the right column compared to the left, each fan that we add after the first one only adds 50% of the first one's energy cost. Most of the game's Zonite devices work this way, so I've gone ahead and called this effect the Standard Combination Rule. Armed with the Standard Combination Rule, we can predict exactly how long we can run any vehicle that's composed out of fans. Let's use the two-fan hoverbike as an example. As you know by now, the hoverbike consists of three parts, two fans and the steering stick in between them. The steering stick doesn't affect our energy use at all, and neither does the positioning of the fans or their orientation or anything like that. As long as they're all part of the same vehicle, it will perform the same way. So let's calculate our depletion and see if we can predict how long we can run this bike for. The base depletion rate of a fan, as you know by now, is 0.156 wells per second. We have two fans on this vehicle, so we get the benefit of the standard combination rule. Because of that, we're going to multiply its base depletion by 1.5 instead of 2. And so, we're going to get that this machine burns 0.234 wells per second. 
Now, my current save file has the capacity of 15 wells, so if we take our 15 wells and divide it by 0.234, we're going to figure out that this bike should last for exactly a minute and 4.1 seconds. So, let's wait out these final few seconds, and we should see the bike fall right about now. And with that, we have successfully predicted the performance of our first vehicle. At this point, we've basically covered most there is to know about the fan, but there is just one more thing I wanted to let you guys know about. You see, the depletion rate of fans gets divided by 4 if any part of their vehicle is touching water or minecart rails. And this also works with the glider launch rails up in the sky. The devs probably made it this way to make things like airboats and fan minecarts a viable way to get around. If we can find some glitch or technique to take this behavior off the rails, then it would have huge implications for the two-fan hoverbike. I'm still looking, but I haven't found anything yet. But anyway, that's all I know about fans. All of the information is on the screen right now, so if you want, you can pause it and take a look. I've talked about one device for long enough, so let's go ahead and move on to the emitter. So, as it so happens, all four types of emitters, those being flame, frost, shock, and beam, all have the same stats, so I'm going to group them together. They all share a base depletion of 0.18, so a little bit higher than a fan. Similarly to fans, they all also follow the standard combination rule, but since we have a different base depletion this time, we need to make a new table. And, if you look in the 10th row on that table, you can see that 10 beam emitters should consume 0.99 wells per second, which explains that test that I showed you earlier. Okay, that's all well and fine, but in this short span of time we just introduced 4 new Zonai devices to worry about, and what happens when you combine them in the same vehicle? Well, to make a long story short, the answer to that question is very simple. Each device will only benefit from a combination rule with the identical type of device. Even if two devices share the same base depletion rate and the same combination rule, if they are different devices fundamentally, then they won't benefit from the combination rule. Because of this, three flame emitters connected together will perform the exact same way as one flame and one frost emitter connected together. As you might have expected by now, if you have a vehicle that contains different types of devices, and multiple of each type of device, all you need to do to find its total depletion rate is to go through device by device, find each device's contribution using its combination rule, and then add those results together. The equation that represents this process is on the screen right now. It's not too complicated, so if you want you can pause it and take a closer look. But, to help with your understanding, I'll also go ahead and give you an example. I am making a machine composed of 4 fans, 2 flame, and 2 beam emitters. Let's go ahead and take our base depletion rates and our combination rules and figure this out. We have 4 fans, so our fan base depletion gets multiplied by 2.5 per the combination rule. We have 2 flame emitters, whose base depletion gets multiplied by 1.5. And we have two beam emitters, whose depletion rate also gets multiplied by 1.5. Adding those results together, we get that this machine should consume 0.93 wells per second. Once again, I have 15 wells on this account, and so we're going to take that 15, divide it by 0.93, and we calculate that this machine should run for 16.1 seconds. And there you go, that's one more vehicle predicted. With that process, we can predict almost any vehicle that you could ever hope to build, as long as of course we know each component's base depletion rate as well as its combination rule. So let's do that. I'll go through the rest of the components one by one, and I'll give you their base depletion, their combination rules, and anything else that you need to know. Next on our list is the Hydrant. It has a base depletion of 0.03 wells per second, making it over 5 times more efficient than a fan. It also follows the standard combination rule, and here is the table taking those two things into account. There's nothing else of note to say about the hydrant that I know of, so go ahead and pause it here if you want to look at the table a bit more closely, because I'm going to move on. Next are the wheels, both the big one and the small one. I'm going to group them in the same place similar to the emitters because they share the same base depletion rate and the same combination rule. 
The wheels have a base depletion rate of 0.015 wells per second. This makes wheels the most efficient device in the entire game. For a bit of a comparison, this is less than one-tenth of the energy that a fan uses, and exactly one-twelfth the energy that an emitter uses. If you're trying to make something move, the wheel is by far the most efficient way to do it. Now, how do they combine together in the same vehicle? Well, wheels are a bit interesting because they actually have their own combination rule. The table for it is on the right half of the screen now. As you can see, in the rightmost column we have some somewhat strange multipliers that we get, but they do produce somewhat reasonable values in the middle column. I guess the devs had some sort of funky thing that they were going for, I'm not really sure why, but these are the data that I collected. This table is only 10 rows long because I got tired of doing tests and I didn't see a pattern to extrapolate it all the way to 20, so if you're gonna run some 11 wheeled vehicle, you're gonna need to do your own experiments. But there you go. There's all the information on the wheels, I'll leave it on the screen for a second, you can pause if you want, let's go ahead and move on. Our next device is the Canon, and let me tell you, this bad boy was a real headache from a research perspective. You see, Canons don't consume energy at a constant rate like every other device in the game. Instead, they just sit there doing nothing while charging up, and then once they fire, they use up a ton of energy in a single instant. What's worse, the first shot comes out much faster than all of the subsequent shots. Taking these two things into account, I went ahead and graphed the energy usage of the cannon over time. This is what that graph looks like. I have time since you turned on the cannon on the x-axis, and I have total amount of energy spent running the cannon on the y-axis. As you can see, it forms this sort of stair-step pattern, where each step happens exactly when the cannon fires. The first shot happens at 0.75 seconds, and then every shot afterwards takes exactly 3.1 seconds to charge. Each shot costs exactly 0.9 wells, and so that's how you get this weird stair-step pattern. As a bit of a comparison, here is a similar graph of well spent versus time for every other device that we've gone over. You will notice a certain pattern, they're all straight perfect lines and they all go through 0, 0. Because they go through 0, 0, each one of these lines can be uniquely described by one value, their slope, and their slope is equal to the device's base depletion rate. And so you can kind of see the problem with the cannon, we just can't choose a straight line through 0, 0 that lines up with this graph, it's just not possible. But we can make a pretty good guess. With the exception of the first shot, the cannon fires once every 3.1 seconds and it uses 0.9 wells to do so. If we divide 0.9 wells by 3.1 seconds, then we get an average depletion rate for this cannon of 0.290 wells per second. This makes cannons the most inefficient device in the entire game. If I were to graph our approximation of the cannon's behavior alongside its actual behavior, it'll look like this, so you can see it's a pretty reasonable approximation. Just know this going forward, that if you have cannons in your vehicle, then the calculator will be a little bit less accurate than it would otherwise. But anyway, the cannon does thankfully follow the standard combination rule, and using that in conjunction with our assumed value of its base depletion, here's the table that we get. As always, you can pause if you're interested, I don't want to linger on this for too much longer, so let's go ahead and move on. Up next, I have a group of 5 devices which behave the exact same way. They're all pretty different from each other, so I'm just going to call this category miscellaneous. These 5 devices are the Construct Head, the Homing Cart, the Zonai Lamp, the Hover Stone, and the Stabilizer. They all share a base depletion of 0.03. More interestingly, they also share a third type of combination rule. The table for that is on screen now. Similar to the case with the wheels, I didn't feel like doing any more experiments than the 10th row, so if you have something that needs like 14 stabilizers or something, first of all, just give up, it's not gonna work, but second of all, you're gonna need to do your own experiments. Now, I do have one thing to note about the Construct Head. You see, while the Construct Head will remain on, any device on top of it will turn off until the Construct Head sees an enemy. 
I obviously have no way to account for this in my calculator, so my calculator just assumes the worst case scenario for energy, that your construct head is always seeing stuff and that all devices are always on. If this isn't the case, then your machine will run for longer than predicted. But yeah, all of that aside, every other device works as normal, and so there isn't really much more to say here. If you want to pause it, go ahead, because I'm gonna move on. Next is the rocket. As you probably know, these guys burn out pretty fast. They burn out so fast, in fact, that it's kind of pointless to use wells per second to deal with them. Instead, it's just easier to find the total amount of energy that a rocket uses over its lifetime, and then just subtract that value from your starting well count. To figure out the total amount of energy that the rocket uses during its lifetime, I connected one to a flame emitter inside of an enclosed testing space. Next, I struck the pair of devices and just waited for my wells to run out. We basically know everything about the flame emitter, so we can figure out how much energy the rocket consumed just by doing some simple calculations. With this process, I found that the rocket consumed exactly 0.54 wells over its lifetime. Additionally, the rocket follows the standard combination rule, so here's that on the screen now. As I mentioned before, if you're trying to predict the duration of a vehicle, and the vehicle has some rockets attached to it, the easiest way to deal with the rockets is to just subtract their total well burn from your starting well count. From there, you divide by the depletion that the other components cause to get your vehicle's duration. But anyway, there you go. That's all the info I have for the rocket, it's on screen now. At this point, we have now gone over every single device in the game which consumes your energy cell. In the next chapter, we'll go over devices which restore your energy. Things like Zonai energy charges and the battery components that you can attach to your vehicles. In part 2. I'm sorry, I really didn't want to do this, but I'm actually going on a trip overseas soon, and I won't be able to edit over there, and so I wanted to get out part 1 before I left. I was hoping to cover all of the components, but this took just a little bit longer to edit than I expected. Nonetheless, you should be able to use the info that I gave you in this video to calculate the duration of any vehicle that you could possibly build as long as it doesn't have any batteries on it. I'll get to that in part 2. To save you some time, I'm going to go ahead and link the calculator that I made for myself in the description. It's really easy to use. At the top you enter your starting well count and the amount of Zonite armor that you have. After that, you can go down through this column in the middle, and one by one you're going to indicate how many of each type of powered Zonite device you have on your vehicle. The calculator will do the rest of the work for you and give you a prediction for how long your vehicle will last. If you want to use this to compare two different vehicle designs, you can do that, I went ahead and built in the space to compare up to five. Although I wasn't able to cover batteries in this video, the calculator does include them. I've done the research, I just didn't have the time to edit the video. I have one warning about this though, I'm still trying to figure out how batteries interact with cannons. There's something weird going on there, and I'm still researching it. If your vehicle has a battery and a cannon on it, then odds are the prediction will be pretty far off. My goal is to be able to explain and solve this problem by the time I release part 2, which hopefully should happen within the next month or so. Outside of that, thank you for watching thus far, and I also wanted to thank my awesome girlfriend for making all of these cool battery designs that you saw me use at the start of the video. If you want, you can stick around until I drop part 2. As I said before, it should be within the next month or so, but other than that, once again thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.